Are you lost? No, I'm okay, thanks. Thank you. Herman Road's that way, right? That way. Just keep going. Great, thanks. Was, right? Yes. I was expecting Kathy. Yeah, Kathy couldn't make it. We, we both tried contacting you. I talked to her Thursday. Yeah, something uh, came up and you're at a cell phone range. Anyway, I'm Andy. I think we met once. Yeah, I know we met. And you were very full of compliments. And you didn't seem to mind the attention. <laughs> that was before I knew you were there with my friend, Kathy. I guess I owe you an apology. I get a little flirty when I'm drunk. I'm happy to see you when I'm sober. Hey, do you have any jumper cables? It's a rental. I doubt it has any cables. Yeah, but sometimes they are under the extra tire. Anyway, I know why you're here, to interview Holly. And I'm sure you know she came up here just to avoid journalists. And it's rather nice. I drove down the hill once a day. I see what people are saying about her. It's not the best media strategy, but that's how Ollie rolls. Yesterday, I went to pick up beers, and I left the headlights on <laughs> and joined the battery. <laughs> now we have no cable, and neither do you. Holly knew Kathy was my friend, and that's the only reason she agreed to give your website an interview. It's not even certain she'll say yes. All you can do is see what she says. So I assume you read the email I sent Kathy about the parameters? Well, I didn't read it, so no, I guess. Oh, well, Holly asked that when you talk to her, first, you let her explain her side, why she left Hamlet, before asking any question. She will not respond to any accusation made by other cast members. She will not answer, so please do not ask. No problem. She will let you know when you are finished. If you want it to last longer than a few minutes, you ask her about art, about theater, not about her movie career. Great. I'm an arts editor. We have an arts readership. Good. And no photos, so leave your phone and computer inside the house. Holly just came back from her work. When she's ready to see you, we'll let you know. Got it. Oh, and also, can you leave your car keys? If I find some jumper cable, I may have to move it. No problem. Andy? Holly says go on up. Good morning, Holly. I'm, uh, I'm Andy. I'm the arts editor. I was expecting Francois's friend. Yeah, uh, Kathy was suddenly unable to make it. You know, she's still finishing her MFA, and she assumed that for this, she could uh, postpone a few things. But uh, in their own minds, you know, Columbia is always the center of the universe. Do you know anything about the theater? Absolutely. In fact, I saw you do Chekhov in Central Park. Now, that was a show. That was before Hollywood even knew who you were. It was good. Seven years ago. Did you see my Gertrude? I did not see this particular Hamlet, no. But, um, but I know Hamlet. I mean, it's one of the biggies. Yeah, it's one of the biggies. It's a fucking monument. It's the most produced play in the English language. 
It's the fire in the heart of the British Empire. It's the horror that engulfed the world in flames. And you want to know why? Why? Because it flatters men. It makes them think that they, in their comparisons with their fathers, their little dick measuring sessions, is the story of the world. Can I? No, the interview hasn't started yet. The thing about Hamlet is the father is a ghost. Patriarchy is a phantom, a real and deadly phantom. But only because you suckers all believe in it. Our production put Gertrude the mother at the center. She is the sun the play revolves around. So why did you leave? How did you get to be arts editor? Well, my, um, my MFA thesis got published as a chapter in a very widely read anthology put out by MIT Press. Really? What's it about? Online art. I was one of the first people at Columbia to apply the Lacanian notion of symbolism to the changing spatial aesthetics of cyber landscapes. Jesus Christ. Do you know anything about theater? What Hamlet's about? What's it about? It's about, um, it's about four hours long. <laughs> it's about universal stuff. Um, the Prince of Denmark, his father dies and his ghost comes back to command him to get uh, revenge on the guy who killed the king and married the queen. It's uh, Freud, but it's deeper. It's like you were saying. Oh, don't even. Oh. Look. No offense. I said no to interviews with the Times, theater magazine, Variety. I am not gonna let some goofball theorist tell people why I left the show, all right? Go back to New York. What's your girlfriend's name? Francois's friend? Kathy? Kathy, send her. I said I would talk to her, and I will. just drove away in my car. Now I'm stuck here. Shit, and I'm out of cell phone range. Well, nice kid, she probably just went up to the neighbors to borrow some jumper cables. Well, she could have asked. Well, she probably thought she'd have more time. It wasn't her fault you blew the interview. No, 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 she had a clue. She told me she didn't know if you'd want to talk to me or not, and she took my car anyway. Well, if it's that important, do you walk up after her? It's two miles top, she'll be there in 20 minutes. Either that, or come have a breakfast beer and wait. I once had five Tibetan monks here for a whole month. One of them was a Talku. You know what a Talku is? No. He's the embodiment of a spiritual tradition. Anyway, I had one of these guys up here and four of his main dudes. All of them chanting up a blue streak, working like hell to do nothing. And you know what they wanted to eat? Meat. Bacon, ribs, pork chops, bratwurst. It's all they wanted. Look, I know you're having a tough weekend. Had to change your plans, didn't get your story, spent all that money on a rental car, I know. Look on the bright side. You're having a day in the country. It's what successful New Yorkers do with their Saturdays. How did you know Kathy was my girlfriend? We were going out. Oh. I'll say it, we did have a fight yesterday. Right, she told you to take your website and shove it. She was looking forward to this. I guess she was just looking forward to dumping me more. I could see this was coming for weeks, I just didn't want to face it. That is totally Gertrude. She knows she's the cause of Hamlet's madness, or at least a part of her knows it, but she chooses to act like she doesn't. It's that thing we all do. We tell ourselves we're being Machiavellian. He who believes the biggest lie has the most power, that kind of thing. But on a deeper level, we're looking for consequences. 
we create these swaths, these wakes of emotional havoc. And then we tell ourselves, what, me worry? Because on the inside, we're looking for results. We want that payback, that slap across the face. It's totally Gertrude. So, why did you leave the show? Off the record, I mean, it sounds like creative differences. I don't know what being an arts editor's like, but being in a play is like being in a relationship. Rehearsals are like the courtship. Opening nights like your first great fuck. You know, and then afterwards, maybe you wanna, you know, go to the movies together once in a while. But sometimes it's impossible to get anything from this emotionally demanding, socially challenged, not quite my lover presence. Most actors just say, it's a summer thing and write it out, but I just couldn't. I could not kiss this Hamlet goodbye on Labor Day and say, I had a great summer. I'd be lying if I did. I can't lie anymore. Who are you talking about? The, uh, the other actors? No, oh, the actors are fine. Not the actor. Mostly it's the audience. They're just as dumb as hell, and they're there for the wrong reasons. They're gonna go tell their friends about how they saw the guy from HBO and Hamlet, and their friends will ask them, so how was it? And they'll say, amazing, amazing. But they never felt a goddamn thing. Very few, very few of them ever do. And the great so-called intellectual class is perfectly content to let them live like that. They're just frauds. They have zero empathy for the public, zero. Women are second-class citizens everywhere and everyone blames the religions. The world's in the fucking shithouse. Took us 200 years to burn the whole place and everyone blames the corporations. And in the meantime, we are just asleep at the wheel. People's imaginations are about as agile as this pig's was. I mean, they're lovely in a way. Noble and lovely, but they just can't think big. And you know whose fault that is? Ours. Me with my stardom. You with your useless master's degree. We are collectively a failure. An absolute failure. This is really great stuff, okay? I mean, people are gonna wanna hear this. People need to hear oh, this. Fucking child. Look, I was willing to overlook the fact that you lied about why you're here, but I'm not gonna put up with this shit. You don't even know you're Shakespeare. Yes, I do. Name me six women in all of Shakespeare's plays. Six women? Right now. Ophelia, Gertrude, Lady Macbeth, Juliet. Uh-huh. Desdemona. That would make five. Caesar's wife. Caesar's wife. But what was her name? That would make six. Six women who fucked their way into the middle of the action. Except for poor little Ophelia. But she was ready to go, you can believe that. No Goneril. No Titania, no fucking witches. Just Caesar's wife and you can't even remember her name. Just another woman doing what women do, fucking their way to the bottom, just like your girlfriend at your tragic website. Great. Can I drive? Yes. How did it go? What? 
What's wrong with you? Calpurnia. Caesar's wife. Calpurnia. <laughs> 